Thank you for coming today. Uh, my name is George Pro. I'm the chair of the uh, selection committee as well as the chair of the redevelopment agency, Van Times Traffic. And I um, want to thank you for your time and your presentation thus far and coming here to interview with us today. And we're going to go around and introduce ourselves. And then if you can do the same, and then after that, the floor is yours. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Ryan Ehrenhaus. I'm chair of the Stratford Historic District Commission, also a resident of the Historic District. Good afternoon, I'm Patrick Carlson. I'm with the Connecticut Metropolitan Council of Governments. We are the regional planning agency for greater, the greater Bridgeport region, which includes the Thames Traffic. Jamie Millward, uh, Chairman of the Official Review Board, Thames Traffic. Mary Jason Economic Development Director, Thames Traffic. Hi, I'm Kristen Gillard-Tinchin, the Town Finance Director. Dave Bjorklund, President, Staff Bjorklund, Associates, and with the Site Planning. Anthony Sells of the Sells of Companies. John Pruitt, architect. Okay, so this is a response to your RFP. Uh, and you submitted on what, June 27th or something like that? June 27th. And um, basically, I mean, this is probably looking a little bit familiar to you. It's even very from the original design that we had two years ago or back in October of 2019. It's essentially three floors above parking, where we had four floors above parking. We had 144 units before, now we're down to 104 units. Uh, 73 parking spaces in a garage. I know the objective was to try to get as much parking as possible, which is still a possibility if this was to be excavated. We'll probably pick up another 450 more cars. This is about 17, 18,000 square feet of area here. Um, if it is the objective to get more parking, we'd have to de-approve the top of the concrete deck and <clears throat> add our landscaping and whatever features that we're going to add. We do have a swimming pool. Uh, we did go with another section of garage in this area. Uh, that swimming pool would have to get mixed and thinking about a pickleball court in lieu of the swimming pool. So uh, we transgressed to the first floor. We do have some commercial. Um, in our proposal, we said if the commercial doesn't work within a year, we wanted the commercial space to be converted to residential. And essentially what we would do is convert this to three units three units, and probably four units here, and we would go probably with larger efficiency units in this area here. We do have a section here for our office. Um, we probably would probably want to relocate it here if we don't get any action on the commercial and put the residential here. Um, floors two and three are essentially the same. We have a stairwell north and south with an elevator. Uh, we have 44 studios, 31 one bedroom, and 31 two bedrooms with total 140 or 140 units. Elevations. <clears throat> we try to maintain the character of the existing neighborhood as much as possible. <clears throat> That's the back elevation facing the parking lot where the bank and all the retail is. And this is the front elevation. The access to the garage is done, by the way, in the back of the building. Here's the front elevation. There's some details that we have to tune up on, but pretty much that's essentially, it. I'd say about 95% there. And then here are your renderings. Here's the park between the two buildings. Uh, it doesn't really show the pool, but the pool is intended to be here. Uh, if not, that's where the pickleball court would go. The, the parking is underneath the building, underneath the grass area. And basically you have a bar, a grill, and all the other amenities that typically you would see in a 100 unit complex. Uh, we think the architecture is beautiful. Right? We 
the cementitious materials uh, on the exterior. And these are showing architectural grade shingles. You're probably going to tune that up to slate or like a simulated state slate. Uh, and we have uh, brick veneer down in here. Uh, it's just a mixture of all types of materials. Brick veneer here, aluminum rails. Uh, Yeah, yeah, once you embellish it, so yeah. With regards to the to the site. Proposal that we made, we've eliminated these two parcels here. Uh, we've combined the parking layout uh, to surface the uh, existing Board of Ed building. Uh, we're proposing to have some shared parking uh, in this area between the Board of Ed uh, and the apartment building. Uh, we do have uh, the 174 spaces required. Uh, we have 185 between the, the garage parking the, uh, uh, the uh, surface parking. So there are 11 extra spaces in this layout. Uh, we, we get more parking was the objective, as Anthony said. We can use some parking in this area. Uh, just some other access is out to uh, out to Sutton. Uh, we do have a healthy amount of green area around it. Uh, we're proposing to have loading here, dumpsters here. Um, there are some options that we did consider that, that could be incorporated into the plan. Uh, if it was desired to have the building be pushed back a little bit further from Sutton and get a little bit further away from the, the single family residences here, that would be possible. We do have some flexibility in, in the rear of the building. And the last feature is, uh, as Anthony pointed out, is we're going to have some recreational facilities right here in the, in the courtyard of the building. Uh, this would be fenced off from this direction here so that it wouldn't have a direct impact on the homes across the street. So this is, this is the site plan as we see it now. And as I said, there is some flexibility to it. So to speak, it is pretty much true to the site plan. Uh, as far as materials, we are proposing brick veneer. We are proposing uh, the exterior insulation and finish system. On the first floor, you'll notice something that looks like uh, limestone. That basically is a cementitious finish, which is pattern in limestone, since we know that some of the buildings in Stratford do have that appearance. Uh, as far as the shingles, we had proposed something of a slate profile uh, for our uh, architectural grade shingles. Um, the rails would be, as Anthony explained, they'd be aluminum rails. Now, the plans, the entire complex is accessible to and usable by disabled persons per ANSI 8117.1. That includes the residences and all of the commercial areas. The elevators give us full and complete access to all three floors. Uh, the various facilities in each unit, the toilets have the spaces and rooms. 10% uh, of the units, according to code, have to be accessible A units, and the balance are going to be accessible B units. So basically, 
the building is accessible to and usable by disabled persons. Uh, the parking lot also has spaces uh, which have uh, van accessible spaces according to what code requires. So what we propose here is a fully accessible building. The scale of the building is intended to be very similar to the scale of the immediate surrounding area. There are plenty of three-story, there's plenty of three-story construction uh, within earshot of this site. So that explains the scale. And that's yeah, and getting back to the parking issue, one thing you want to note is that at Ferry Boulevard, which is walks of 335, we have 76 parking spaces, I believe. Yes. Uh, we picked up two or three others in addition to those 76. So the total has 79 spaces, which includes a, uh, a parking station for, or a charging station for a vehicle. But one thing that's very interesting is that that whole formula where we had, everyone was concerned about how the QD regulations were gonna work with the parking. We are 100% occupied and we <clears throat> are occupying 72 spaces out of the 79 spaces. <coughs> so it seems to be like one space per unit. You know, it was, you know, we were getting a little bit nervous there at one point, but it worked out. Uh, you know, a lot of people like to park two cars, and some are. Uh, there are a couple of people who just have bicycles that they take to the train station. Uh, there's one guy that walks to the train station. Uh, uh, there's one girl that runs to the train station. Uh, but out of the whole bunch, 71 units, I would say, you know, 5%, 6% are actually walking to the train station. This, this being where it's located, I would assume that you're probably gonna bring it up to 20, about 30%. So is the parking requirement all the COD regulations? Definitely, uh, because our experience has been good with it. Uh, and we, we, we're really comfortable with the, what the parking is. So just stay in the food for thought for the future. Great, I think we have a couple questions, so we'll just uh, get into them. Uh, can you speak a little bit to uh, the Not demographic? Not to sit down and charge me back a little bit. Absolutely. Um, can you just describe the demographic of your target market? Uh, young professionals, millennials, you know, um, you know, seniors kind of aging in place type of thing. I, I know you talk to, you know, comparable at least the, the loss at Ferry. Um, maybe, you know, if it's similar to that, to, to that makeup. So if you can maybe speak yeah, to what the you're The target thinking. market is the millennial market primarily, but the mix at Ferry Boulevard is probably 23 to 35, okay? couple guys in their 40s and then there's a gap between 42 44 years old to 60 something years of age and then we have five elderly people one person's 102 years old uh, another is 92 years old another is 96 years old I can remember numbers not names but <laughs> Uh, so your vacancy rate is going to look is what you're saying. I'm sorry. So your vacancy rate is going to look is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sure. Okay. But, okay. But, okay. but um, no, but you know what? We do have a waiting list. We have probably 20 people on a waiting list. So, yeah. So, it's, it's, it's so there's a you would say there's a there's a range and it. Uh, yeah, like I said, there seems to be a gap between yep. like 45 and like 60, 65. And millennials are seniors, maybe? I'm sorry? Would you say millennials and seniors? Yes, okay. yes. I'm sorry, so you said 44 to 60, and that, can you do that again? 23 to 35 years of age seems to be the average. Age. That seems to be the hot spot, and then from 35 to 42, 44, there's a, you know, a half a dozen, four or five, six, uh, and then we have Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, 
Can you talk a little more about uh, some of the amenities that you're offering within the building, on the outside of the building, but for the people who are living there and renting there, and then also perhaps some of the things that might be accessible and offered to the general community around? Mm -hmm. Sure, absolutely. Um, we have on the first floor a fitness facility. Every one of our communities has a fitness facility. You gotta have a fitness facility. Uh, on a fitness rink, and I believe it's it's a requirement of any any facility. So the fitness facility is here. We have a tenant conference room that they can use at any time as long as they schedule it in advance. Uh, we have a coffee type restaurant that will serve not only the tenants but also serve the community. Uh, we have our on-site office plus our office for general purposes, uh, and on-site. We have, as John mentioned and Dave had mentioned, uh, we have, we're gonna have a bar out here, not a rowdy bar or anything like that, but just, you know, cocktails or whatever. And uh, you know, a grill, a fire pit, uh, swimming pool and or pickleball court, depending on if you want more parking. Um, you're gonna probably ask me how much more is the parking gonna cost? That's probably gonna be about a million and a half dollars more. Uh, so, what would be available to the public? I mean, if someone wants to take a restaurant here, we'll take office space, this coffee slash restaurant here. Uh, we can work some arrangement out with the local neighborhood for the fitness facility. Have no problem with that. For a very nominal fee. But it's, you know, it's right there with any type of apartment complex that you see. Everyone's trying to amenitize all these communities. And I tell you what, some of the amenities aren't even used. It's just to say that, oh, I'm in that building. I, they have great amenities. How many times they use it? We have a business office available to our, our tenants. How many times they use it? Zero. I haven't seen one person in there. Yeah, thank you. Could, could you describe the inspiration or the approach that drove you to your specific solution here? I'm sorry? Can you just describe, like, what inspired, what was the inspiration behind this approach? I'm a developer. I like to build. <laughs> <laughs> just in terms of how you laid it out. The, the oh, how we laid it out. Yeah. Well, and Dave and John, I could give a credit to them for that. Okay. And, you know, I just look at, Okay, we have a certain amount of acres. I don't know how many units we can get on it, and how much parking we can get on it, and I leave it up to those guys to lay it out. So we have our typical floor plan for each unit. Uh, the same floor plan applies to Ferry Boulevard. It's very functional, uh, very efficient. Every square inch is used by the tenant. There's not one area of that floor plan that's not used by the tenant. I am actually in one of the apartments by itself right now, but as you know, I live in Florida and i'm trying it out for size and you know i live in some fairly good sized houses and living in 700 square feet you never lose your, your, your cell phone you know? <laughs> it's, it's like where's your cell phone it could be in one area right either on a coffee table or in the kitchen and you only have to worry about the front door so yeah um and uh you know we have another project plan it's called bell harbor uh and we're thinking about taking a unit up on the top floor and uh, combining a one bedroom and a two bedroom together. And that would be my, my summer residence. Or maybe even there. Yeah, that's Would you be open to considering a deed restriction on some of the units? A deed for restriction? For affordability. Yeah. For affordable. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Um, how much of a percentage are you thinking? 10%. How much? 10. 10%? That's mm -hmm. possible. That's yeah. possible, but uh, the economics are, 
got there, as, as you know. Um, but maybe we can work something out with the tax appraisal. Okay. And, um, yeah, so the size of the unit is 'd be regulations yes we follow the TOD regulations to the T and I know there was something in the addendum that said that you don't have to follow the regulations but we already had it designed at that point so we're gonna go back to the board and redesign it so we just kept it the way it was um, you know in, in hindsight we may have put more residential down here but these are going to be tough to lease, there's no question, without having any frontage on East Broadway, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if we could get those two houses, this is, that's, that would be huge. That would be huge. Because you're going to create a park out there, okay, and that give you frontage, you know. You know, maybe have a roadway coming in and then have the park on both sides or, you know. Okay. I, I kind of touched on the, your project 335 lot, but um, can you talk a little more about a project that most resembles what you're doing here, whether it's scale of project or whether it was a TOD project, but something very similar? I, I have a feeling you'll, you'll say 335 lot, but. Another project that's similar in architecture? Yes. Uh, well, it, it. Concept. Yeah, concept, right, thank you. In, you know, in, in the development of a project, maybe in, in a site of this size, this many units, doesn't necessarily have to match the architecture, but similar scale of project. Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of projects that we've done. We've done projects in Florida, uh, and most of the Well, let's keep it, say, say somewhere around here, say not a Florida project, but say something regionally around here that was a, you know, might have been a hundred units, something like that. Might have been on, you know, maybe hopefully this maybe the TOD project. Mm -hmm. One hundred unit building contiguous. I I don't know if we have one. Okay. I, I don't know if we have. I have to think about that. Um, I'm not sure if we have one. Uh, we got San Sierra was eighty six. Oh no, we didn't lose in, in Brunswick for sure. Florida. That was 104. Um, yeah, mo most of our residential development has been, I don't want to say cookie cutter, that's a bad word, but repetitive type of construction where uh, we have the same type of floor plans and maybe four or five options. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of been our niche. Our niche has been multifamily uh, for the last 20 something years. It was educational, as you know, George, we've been talking about profits with the Um uh, We were kind of segued out of that market because we got too competitive uh, and moved into the multifamily market. So I think you might have answered this, but I'm not totally sure. So let's go back to the parking. How did you come up with the calculations for the parking? Yeah, yeah they're based upon the, the TOD regulations. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, yeah, they're all, there's a, on the site plan, there's a parking chart. For the, uh, for the, uh, it wasn't the site plan that Patrick said we didn't do it. Oh. Well, it was No. Well, apologize for that. The, uh, there was work. This, this is right from the site plan. So 17 are allocated for the retail, and six properties. And DOE is 39. Is your share of those institutional the same? Yeah, we had expected that there would be a good opportunity here because of the nature of the residential, that there would be an opportunity to share parking during the working hours. Yeah. And how many of those spaces are underground versus the surface that you have on the site plan? Is there a breakdown? 73. Thank you. And we can probably pick up another 40 or 50 if you uh, excavate and install parking. You're 
it'd be it'd be colossal, but I don't think it could be done. It takes three days to construct it. How much parking? Or, I'm sorry. No. So how much parking do you need? Uh, well, we had in the RFP we had the 20 for BOD, then we had you know whatever you feel comfortable for the visitors, and then whatever you feel comfortable for visitors to the apartment complex, mm -hmm. then what's required for apartment complex, and then the staffing of the BOD, and then whatever was extra would be public. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to try to saturate the property with as much parking because. We like hopefully you were thinking that once we energize this area with the residences, it's going to enliven the retail restaurants, everything else that's downtown there. So there's going to be people, people coming in, maybe need a place to park, and mm -hmm. you, you sort of um, control the parking here. You know, residents have a key pass, whatever the case may be. So yeah. nothing set in stone, but as much as we could. Right, right. right. As long as there was some surface, I'm yeah. parking, not so much. You know, I saw an article where I think you were quoted as saying. That you'd like the 200 parking spaces where you can get 200. Right. So, well, you, you can get close to that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's just, you know, there's, we try to create some green spaces around the building, but, you know, there's an effort, it's a pretty obvious opportunity right here and here in order to, uh, to add more parking. That would be surface parking. So, as I said, there's, there's some flexibility in the site plan. Mm -hmm. They would actually want less surface, not more. Right. More on the ground. So we just want to. Well, there's, as Andrew said, there's you know there's the option of going further underground, and then right. there is there are some options at, at the surface. Right. I mean, we can do a suspended pool, but in my experience, uh, I've done two of those, and they're okay for probably five, six years, seven years. And you just start looking. You know, uh, it's, it's just really a, a suspension system. Force of gravity. It's just not a good, good option. Um, I mean, a lot of the buildings in in Florida, because they're such tight sites, have parking or parking a, a pool up on a top floor. Uh, on the very very top, you know, the views of say the Atlantic or of the Gulf, uh, and sometimes they have. Seven is pretty much answered with the allocation of parking right now as we see it. So we can move on to George again. Yes, it, it, it's basically a continuation. So, in the underground parking, um, what did you see the town's obligation, whether it's financial or whatever the case may be, in regards to it? In other words, if we're basically saying to you, let's get some of that surface off of there and go underneath, right? So, um, in your initial study, have you done any allocation in regard to what you'd be expecting from us as a town at this point? Yeah, well, we have a proposed round of grant, thank you, Grant. We're paying you $500,000. Right, we are, obviously. Um, however, I mean, if you want the underground parking area that we could build with a $500,000 deal of land, you pay me $500,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's something that you have to go back to the drawing board, so to speak, and refer Well, I mean, it's not major modification to put the park up the building. Right. You know. Right. Yeah, I'm just worried about the damp proofing. Right. Making sure that the water gets into the basement. Right. You know, you don't want anything to get through the rebar or get through the, the, the concrete or get through structural steel and mm -hmm. 10, 15 years later, you know, you have a problem where you have to come back and replace structural steel. There's plenty of buildings that I've seen as especially in Florida, you know, and we all know what happened. Uh, rebuilding. And that was suspended concrete. I think it was uh uh, slip form construction too. Uh, so what happens when the connections do rust and the a lot of suspended concrete does spoil after a while. Even using the epoxy reinforcement, how I know when I, they will spoil. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it was the latest flow, but then in 15, 20 years, you're gonna be repairing it. You know, a lot of tile has been taken off its decks because it traps water. The water permeates the concrete, gets to the reinforcing, tops the tile, and it becomes a worse situation. So a lot of the decks, they will not allow tile in. A lot, there's a lot of suspended concrete down there. Mm -hmm. uh, the structural steel is at maybe 20%. Uh, the construction, a lot of suspended concrete. But whether it's suspended concrete or structural steel, there's always a spalling or some type of event that does happen after, after 15, you know, 20 years. Can you speak a little bit about the anticipated rent? by unit size and then mm -hmm. what you use to project to come up with the rent and the, and the expenses? Yeah, I think um, we're pretty much in line with the, the numbers now for, uh, for the boulevard, but we do have to anticipate an increase off these numbers. We're using today's numbers and not 2024 numbers, but the yeah. market retracts and many of the new oil, who knows, right? Uh, but we're projecting Right now, about two dollars and thirty-five or fifty cents a square foot. Um, we have on the first floor our efficiency units. They're about four hundred fifty square feet each, and the target would be. 1175 to 1350. Uh, one bedroom's target would be 1700 to 1900. And a two bedroom unit could be 2250 to 2450. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your financial staffing for the project? How does it include any public or private salaries? I think you alluded to that you are not seeking any public funds uh, for this, but maybe just talk about your financing, things like that for the project. Uh, talking conventional debt, uh, and our own equity. But it's, you know, pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple, we're not gonna complicate it mm -hmm. with any bonding or ta tax credits or uh, interrupting. That's, that's too complicated for me. <laughs> it's just, you know, and you have to think, you know. <laughs> we don't want to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it. So, um, we wanted to know about your plans or your vision for 954 East Broadway, the property across the street, I mean, down the street. Um, uh -huh. On Broadway. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Corner of Sutton and East Broadway. On the corner of Sutton East Broadway. You're talking about this piece here? Yeah. Yes. What were the plans for that? Yeah. We had an entrance last time coming off of off of East Broadway, coming into the project. Now we're coming off of Sutton. Okay. And then this was going to be, I think, green space, right? I didn't, what? We didn't incorporate it yeah. at all. I would, from a site plan perspective, I'd rather see an entrance in off of East Broadway. That's absolutely rather, rather than the tax. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you Sorry. know, having these two pieces is it's not critical, but it's it's important. So it would probably just be one potential. Yeah, well, well, even, even one piece here even even would, perfect, make, you know? would make a big difference. Yeah, that, that this this piece here would make a huge difference. That over the whole site. Why did you um Dave, why did you bail out of the entrance off the East East Broadway? I didn't think that we were able to, as I read it, we weren't able to use the 53 parcel. No, no, in our RFP, we had we show your area when we had an entrance exit off of East Broadway. It was depicted on our RFP. Um, you know, George, I, I didn't see that. Okay. I don't know if I didn't get that part of it, but no, I thought we went back to the, the site planning. I thought that we, we couldn't do that. Again, as I just said, I don't, I think that an entrance off of East Broadway is really the way to go here. And okay. The residence is on the other side of Sutton. I just think that the least impact we could have on them, the better the, uh, you know, having entrance and, and 
said all of a sudden uh, this is going to have an impact on us. If we could go to around 952, that's would be the way I, I would prefer to service the, the nice. building, and it's going to help the retail. We must have missed that. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, do you plan on keeping the property um, under long-term ownership? I don't plan on working the rest of my life. I <laughs> Uh, my children are not interested in this part of the business. They're interested in the medical part of the business. Uh, my two daughters are attracted to dental over Columbia and uh, medicine. So they're working with the medical company. So that makes sense. So, and that's one of the reasons why I started the company. Uh, so they're interested in that. My son um, is no longer, well, he's interested if it's easy, right? So cryptocurrency is easy to him. And I mean, he's mining for crypto cryptocurrency. He's got the machines all over the office, and that's easy to him. Okay, I mean, to me, it's difficult. I don't know formulas. I don't know all that computer science stuff. Uh, he's a financial guy. He, you know, he runs algorithms, and he runs our hedge fund. Uh, so, will he ever get involved with construction and development? I don't think so. So that would be no. <laughs> I think so. Right? <laughs> but you know, a qualified buyer steps up. And we have to be a qualified bar, yeah. But I mean, you know, uh, I, I still have a lot of energy, and I don't. Uh, what do I have that? There's only so much golf and boating. <laughs> it's, it's, it gets boring early. Um, interesting to us um, this time around. You chose to put the retail component in. What happened with, with the retail company this time? Last time you started against it, this time you had an eight-year project. So well, you know, we're trying to conform to the TOD regulations, and we put a caveat in there saying that if the retail does not lease, we want to convert it to residential. And by converting it to residential, I think we pick up uh, oh, one, two, three, five. Part and partial to um, what led you to reduce the number of units because you did say that you reduced the number of units this time versus last time. What 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 was the impetus of that? We just chopped one floor up. For what any reason? Well, because you're, you're saying that you wanted more parking for for the residents or for the town. So the option for the additional parking would be in that green spot. Okay, so in order to in order to get the parking, you need to cut out units? Right, right. So we have eliminated 44 units to give you the opportunity for more parking. So if we have 44 more units. Yeah, they know that we can, we can fit the parking on this site because we proved it before. But to get more flexibility, you'd have to, you'd have to put the parking in. Okay. Um, what is the Appear to be too common retail component. So, if we were to go back and say, look, you know, we don't want retail, it seems like you'd be more than that. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's all about price per square foot, right? So, what could you get for retail in downtown? $10, $12 a square foot gross. Your expenses end up running like four or five dollars a square foot for each of the taxes. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, you know, if we're getting two dollars a square foot or two fifty a square foot per month, right? That really works out to about thirty dollars a square foot. gentlemen have any questions of us? So are you definitely going to go ahead with it this time? Or? We're, we're open, good little run, yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, um, we're excited about it and um, we definitely want to see something happen. We, being that speaking for the town, want to mm -hmm. see something happen for the town. So um, yeah, we are uh, full steam ahead as much as you can in the public arena. Yeah. And could we ask uh, what the other concepts include? Just 
They, they, you know, um, every one of them had a lot more than this. Um, it was sort of a mixed um, bag of surplus versus underground. Mm -hmm. um, one told the committee the total underground, some partial underground. Um, um, the respect of the architecture of the area, um, density, scale, and all that was um, done rather well. So, you know, we think we have four um, very different approaches, which is interesting. Obviously, different teams, different people, right? So, um, that was good for us to see what can be done. What can I, you know, if this is the only one that has retail component, right? So now we know what it could look like with retail. So, um, that's, that's kind of where we think. You said more units, uh, how many more units? Um, we, we have 298. Oh, wow. But that, that's because it was total underground. So, um, yeah, so, you know, we're, we're all over the lot, which is good, right? Because there's flexibility, there's a lot of things to think about. Yeah. So then 198 units, were they five stories? I'm not sure if that's a... No, no it's four. It's four. Yeah, 198 Pelican Street. 162. 62, I'm sorry. 162. Yeah. Inverted, so. Well, yeah, okay, so we have 144 before. Yeah. yeah. One had 162, one had 122, one with no terminals, and yeah. four can use as well for entrance. Yeah. yeah, as you can see, it's been interpreted all over the place. Yeah, they're all contiguous or separate units? A mix of both. A mix of yes, both. Yeah. yeah, I noticed, uh, I was reading the environmental report before, and that's still kind of up in the air, right? In regards to well, they said something about a tank uh, or something from the prior use, you know, before the. No, no, no. The, that tank is on the DOE project, yeah, and we're just trying to get our um, funding confirmed. We have a reallocation of funding because we had the remediation of the extended school property, mm -hmm. and so we're trying to use those funds to get rid of the tank to still. Okay, but the tank is still there. Oh, but it's on board of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no, we are one hundred percent clean here. We are ready to go. And that funds. Didn't they say there was some fill that had been contaminated? No. 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 Yeah, I mean, they were just kind of vague about it. That might have been, that might have been past tense because that $1.2 or $3 million that we got allocated to um, clean up the property included subsurface. Okay. Specifically, it had been cleaned. <clears throat> like I said, now since then, because we didn't have to use all the money, we've got some money left over, so we're trying to reallocate some of that funding to get rid of the steel underground tank for the Board of Ed building. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're in the process of doing, and that's what I'm going to do. But no, for all intents and purposes, this is clean, these are still ready to go out and go. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Unless you've got a report that I haven't seen yet, that's the white design. <laughs> no, I, I, I just, I went through it real quick, so. Yeah, I, yeah, not here. Yes. Well, thanks again for your time. Okay, today. thank you. Appreciate thank your effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank so you. much. Sure. Dave, you want this back or can I keep this? No, you can have it. Please. And Anthony, would you be so kind to send um, Mary Dean both an electronic copy and um, the number of copies of these type forms? Sure. Okay. Um, that's important for us to do our assessment. Okay. I'll send you a reminder.